In this video we take a closer look at the fitting panel. This panel is the central entry point for most of the weighting tasks, especially for optimizing the weight maps for fitted mesh models. So, let's begin by preparing the settings. First of all enable the option, apply immediately. This option takes care to apply all subsequent changes in this section directly to the mesh. Thus now you can tweak the fitting parameters interactively. But beware, this setting can slow down Blender a lot. Now select for example the pelvis slider, and move it a tiny bit to the left. You see that as soon as the slider value gets smaller than 1, the blue second life pelvis bone appears. And when we move the slider further to the left, then the weights are gradually moved from the collision volume to the corresponding classic bone. Thus the influence of the collision volume gets smaller and smaller, and the colors of the weight map change more and more towards blue. Finally we see the fitted mesh pelvis bone disappears as soon as the slider value is set to zero. Hence the pelvis is no longer fitted, and all weights have been moved over to the classic second life bone. However, we have taken care to keep the sum of the distributed weights constant. So actually we do not lose any weight when we move the sliders, we just shift the weight between the classic bone and its collision volume bone. So why do we do this? The animations are actually controlled by the weight sum of the weights in the classic bone and the corresponding weights in its related collision volume. So by only changing the distribution of the weights, while the sum of the weights is kept constant, we ensure that our animations later don't break when we change the character shape. In contrary to the animation, the character's shape is only controlled by the weights on the collision volumes. So by gradually shifting the weights from the classic bone to its collision volumes, we can fully control how the mesh gets deformed, without ever breaking the animation of the mesh. Now let's also turn the belly slider to zero, until the belly bone fully disappears. Now our mesh is no longer influenced by the belly appearance slider. However, when we select the blue second life bones, we see the weights have been moved to them. So please remind, the fitting sliders just distribute the weights between the blue second life base bone, and its orange fitted mesh counterpart. And the more weight the fitted mesh bone gets, the more it influences the mesh shape. So all we need to do is finding the best matching distribution for the weights. So, let's adjust the sliders inside view. Well, using the sliders alone seems to already give some improvements, but we still get distortions for big belly sizes. Obviously it is not sufficient to distribute all weights in the weight maps by the same amount. We actually need a method to influence the distribution of each vertex individually. But we also want to avoid tedious adjusting for every single vertex, which can quickly take many hours, even days and weeks. And for this task Avastar provides a couple of new features which help to significantly speed up your work. In the next video you get introduced to the most simple tool, Smooth by Weights. Then in subsequent videos I will proceed to the more sophisticated features, Adjust to Shape, Bake to Mesh, and Shape Key Automation. Have a nice day, and see you in the next video.